everyone, this is Kristen Brindley, publisher of DC Metro Real Producers, and I am here with our fantastic partner, Joseph Asamoa, um, and it's a pleasure to have you on. Joe, you are a uh, uh, valued partner of Real Producers, and your partner spotlight was in the December issue, so if people haven't checked it out yet, definitely check it out. Um, you know, Joe, honored to have you on. Thanks for being on. Sure. Thanks a lot. It's a, a real honor and privilege to be on the, on, on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so, I mean, you, uh, what I think about when I think about what you do, um, the wealth and legacy that you create with a human touch to it, and you serve an underserved group of people while you create that, and you educate others, like 500 plus people in the area to do the same things that you're, you're doing. And the way that you think about the whole pie, and there's enough pie for everyone, it really resonates with me and I feel like it really resonates with um, highly successful people. And so I love what you do. And I would love uh, for everyone else to hear a little bit more about like your journey. And I mean, you have 30 DC properties, helped 500 people educated. I mean, this is, uh, it's an honor to have you on. So tell us about that. Like, how did this all get started? Tell us your story. Uh, I used to, I was born in Ghana and then we were five years old and moved to England. So I lived in England until I came to the US, uh, October the 17th, 1985 at 7.30 on TWA flight 732. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so as they say, it's a defining moment. Anyway, so I was, uh, I came to the US. I only knew one person here, that was my boss. And um, it just so happened that uh, this person, a boss, he had, um, he was let go from his job uh, shortly after I arrived. And uh, we met up uh, several weeks later and he told me that, um, you know, it's okay, this is America, these things happen, you know. <laughs> you got a job today, you got no job tomorrow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> welcome to the real world. Yeah? Uh, and uh, so he said, it's no problem because I've got these rental properties. Uh, and this guy had like 10 houses at that time. And uh, I just couldn't fathom how anybody could have more than one house. You know, I mean, 10 is like, whoa, <laughs> what is all that about? <laughs> and uh, so he says, uh, you know, Joe, you know, uh, it's okay because I have this rental income coming through. I got this residual income, so I'm fine. And, but this could happen to you. You know, uh, what happens if you were to lose your job? I mean, what are you gonna do then? Uh, make sure you have a plan B just in case. And so he said, you know, check out this real estate stuff. Uh, but if you do, uh, let me give you some words of wisdom. Um, you know, buy as many as you can and keep houses, don't sell them. And, uh, and over the long haul, you'll be very appreciative of that. And so that's this, uh, the words of wisdom that got me on this journey. And needless, needless to say, I bought one of those, you know, late night infomercial products. And uh, you too could do this, just give me a credit card. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, you, you, know, you know the drill. <laughs> yeah. And so I bought this guy's course. Anyway, the bottom line, I bought my first house in Washington, D.C. in 1987, two years after I arrived here. It was in an area called Columbia Heights um, and in Northwest Washington. And Columbia Heights in the 1980s is not the Columbia Heights of today, I tell you that. <laughs> uh, but I bought this thing for 47000 and uh, at the time, people said, you know, man, 47,000, you're getting ripped off. You're getting duped. Uh, you're getting scabbed. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, but having traveled around the world, uh, I knew there was something about capital cities. They're all the same, whether it's London, Paris, Rome, you know, they're all the same. Uh, you know, it's where the money is. It's where you know, uh, population centers are, and um, over time, real estate in those, in capital cities tend to appreciate. I lived in London, so I know how it works. Yeah. And so I knew that uh, over time, the prices would go up. Uh, I didn't know when, I just knew that it's just, that's just the way it works in capital cities. Uh, so I bought this house, and uh, I mean, I don't want to bore you the details. I had the tenants from hell, uh, I didn't, you know, I got, Big time. I mean, it was a, a nightmare, uh, but I, I got through it. I survived it, and um, and then I bought the second house, and then bought the third house, and just kept on going, and uh, until 2003, when my rental income from my job uh, equaled what I was making from. Sorry, the rental income from my properties 
equal my rental in my income for my job. Uh, <laughs> so the plan B was in place, you know, and, uh, and therefore I was able to transition outside of the corporate world into being a full-time real estate investor. So that's essentially the, uh, the Cliff Notes version of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you've done what many people would love to do, right? So you exited corporate America and created, you know, income for yourself and over over time wealth and 30 plus properties. And, uh, mm. you know, uh, if you could give advice to anyone listening, what what kind of advice would you, you give in the investor world? And, um, you know, what would you tell, what would you tell them was one of the greatest lessons you learned during that journey? Well, I think that, I mean, I got into this not knowing anything. I knew nothing. I bought my first house. You probably knew more about real estate investing than I did when I bought my first house. <laughs> you probably knew 10 times more than I did. I just bought a house, okay? <laughs> Based on the infomercial, you know? <laughs> and uh, needless to say, all the, her the horror stories I was going through wasn't included in the infomercial product, you know? So, <laughs> you know, so I had to just, uh, it was baptism by fire. And uh, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. I had no one to turn to, you know, it was just sink or swim. Uh, so that's essentially uh, what I had to go through. But, you know, looking back, it's not really necessary to do that. Uh, I'm not the first one to do real estate investing. Um, many people do real estate investing and there's no need to recreate the wheel, as they say. Uh, the wheel's already been recreated and therefore it, the, the key is going to be, okay then, what are your strengths? Uh, what are your weaknesses? What are you good at? What are you not good at? Um, you know, what are your goals? Uh, do you want cash today? Do you want cash for later on? And, uh, and essentially, uh, learn the basics. You don't need to learn everything. Uh, just learn the basics about what it is that you want to do. Uh, I'm into the long-term hold, so I buy and keep these houses. So obviously, I rent my properties. So learn the basics of that. And then probably the most important thing is to find people who are more seasoned, more experienced who are successfully doing what it is that you want to do. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, love, that, I love modeling and, um, you know, learning from people that are much Exactly, better. exactly. I mean, as I say, a wise man learns from his mistakes. A genius learns from other people's mistakes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, so there's no point being a wise person. You want to be a genius. <laughs> You want to learn from other people's mistakes rather than make it. It's good, to, it's good to learn from your mistakes, but why make mistakes if you don't have to? Uh, and so, you know, so it's better to learn from other people's mistakes by uh, identifying a seasoned people who are successfully doing what it is that you want to do. And, uh, and therefore, they'll tell you how to navigate this minefield. Uh, they'll help you navigate and avoid these uh, landmines that are on this uh, road to financial independence. And, uh, and, and so on. So that's really the key thing is find someone, not just people who are doing it, but people who are successfully doing it because it's two different things. Uh, it's just like there are lots of people who are real estate agents and there are fewer people who are successful at the you know, top producers. You know, there are fewer of those as opposed to the pool of real estate agents. So if you wanna be a top producer, you wanna associate with top producers and uh, they'll tell you, this is how it works. This is what I did. This is what you should do, uh, given where you are, uh, because they have a successful track record. It's the same thing for real estate investing. Uh, you wanna associate with somebody who's successfully doing what it is that you wanna do in the real estate domain, and they'll tell you, this is how you do it. There's lots of investors, but there are fewer successful investors, especially investors who've been through market cycles. Uh, I've been through four of them. Uh, <laughs> this is the fifth one with the COVID. So uh, I've been through five of these cycles. So I know how they play out. Uh, and, and so you want to kind of associate with people who've been through the ups and downs. And, uh, and they'll tell you, because it's easy to make money during the good times. It's not so, diff it's not so easy to make money during the downtime, the bad times. Uh, but there are strategies. There are successful strategies on how to, uh, you know, perform in the, the good times and bad times, you know, yeah. and then uh, do it. <laughs> so, so can you tell everyone, because uh, our real producers, just like you said, the top 500, you know, they do over 80% of the business in the greater area at about 20,000 agents. Um, you know, it's the same in investing, like it's always that 80, 20 rule, but it seems to be on steroids these days. So how can someone 
you know, uh, what's your website and how can someone um, be educated or be part of your sphere? Like, tell us, um, you know, how your classes work and um, what you're looking for here in 2021 and 2022. Like, what are you, what are you trying to do? Like, I know you, you buy properties and you have a ton of people you've helped in the area of buying properties. Tell, tell us how, um, you know, we can get in touch with you and, and maybe create some of that success for ourselves. Yeah, I mean, my website is Joe, J-O-E Asamoah, A-S-A-M-O-A-H.com. So it's joeasamoah.com. And I'm also on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Uh, I had about 450 uh, Instagram followers about a year ago. I've got 11,000 now. So, <laughs> so I'll get there, you know. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, uh, essentially, there's different ways. Um, from my perspective, it, it, it's all about education. You gotta know what it is uh, that you wanna do. And uh, working with the real top producers, um, you know, there's, it's, it's always difficult to find good deals. <laughs> uh, everybody wants a good deal. You want a good deal, I want a good deal. <laughs> we all want a good deal. That's fine, uh, yeah. But, you know, uh, you know it, it's the challenge of, uh, you know, trying to find, uh, you know, transaction properties that make sense. I typically, in, in this market, it's hard to find good deals on houses that are in good condition. Because if it's in good condition, everybody wants it. You want it. <laughs> and, uh, so what I realized is that, you know, you've got to kind of go for properties that are so, what I call intimidating. You know, the condition is bad. The kind of stuff when you go and you, you know, your nose turns up, your eyes say, what, you know, I, you know uh, the first house I uh, met my wife at, uh, the previous owner smashed every single window in. Uh, they poured cement down the toilet. Uh, they put graffiti all over the, I mean, they lost the house in a foreclosure. And so they that were makes angry. sense. Yeah, I was wondering, I'm like, why would they pour cement down? That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, they lost the house in the foreclosure. So I think they wanted to stick it to the mortgage company <laughs> on the way out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> if I can't have this, then yeah. <laughs> have fun. Yeah. yeah have fun. Right. So that's the kind of house that I go for. Uh, because I'm assuming that if you were to go there, Kristen, uh, <laughs> you'll say. <laughs> You probably not you probably not make an offer on that house. <laughs> so um, so I look for houses where uh, you know it's it's in bad condition, it's intimidating, and therefore the competition is lower. You know, so now I'm only competing with other real estate investors. I'm not really in, in competing with the you know Harry homeowner uh, and, and just your regular you know real estate buyer. I'm not competing with them because there's no way they're going to buy those kind of houses. They can't get financing, and they don't have the wherewithal to turn that thing around. So, uh, so it's really that, you know, it's looking for houses in, in, in bad condition in neighborhoods that, uh, you know, on decent neighborhoods, it doesn't have to be the best uh, because the thing about uh, real estate in this area, the DC area is that over time, neighborhoods transition. So, I mean, I'll give you the house of uh, my first house in Columbia Heights. I mean, that was no big deal uh, in the eighties. I mean, nowadays, Columbia Heights is three quarters of a million, $800,000, million dollar homes up there now. Yep. I still own the house. And- <laughs> You made like 750 grand on just the, the house. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, because time is very, uh, what's the right word? Uh, forgiving. You know, uh, you can buy something today. Uh, you may think you're paying too much, but five, 10 years from now, you're thinking what a genius I was to buy at such a low price. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, so uh, if you take a long term view, then uh, usually it, it tends to work itself out, you know, uh, in this sort of the metro DC area, whether it's Maryland, DC or Virginia. Uh, but the key is you, you got to be able to hold on to these houses during that time. And, uh, and that's where the whole idea of, uh, you know, being a landlord, you know, the infamous landlord. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and, and making sure that uh, you can screen to get the right tenants, making sure you can manage the relationships with the tenants such that you can sort of uh, realize, you know, the power of real estate over that time. Um, and if you don't believe me, all you got to do is, which is why I take to my students, I, I take them down to the landlord tenant court, you know, uh, to see the 
the other side of this. <laughs> the, the other side of this story, yeah. <laughs> Uh, where there are landlords who are going crazy uh, because they got tenants from hell and you know they're, having, they're pulling their hair out and so on. So it's important that if you're going to do this, you do it right. Uh, and that's what I'm saying about the whole idea. There's no point recreating the wheel. I, I know how to do this. I know how to find good tenants. I know how to manage the tenant relationships. I know how to, if things go wrong, you take care of it. I mean, these are uh, a standard uh, operating procedures and systems. And, uh, and so, you know, so going back to, you know, why we should do this, we should do this because real estate works. I mean, I don't think there's anybody in the real producers community who said, who, who can look you in the face and say, buying real estate in the DC area is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think there's not one person who would say that. Uh, they, so it's not, it's not, you don't have to convince anybody. I mean, most people get it. Uh, the issue is how do you do it? You know, how do you buy a house and rent it? How do you buy two houses? How do you buy three houses? My boss had 10 houses. How, how is that possible? You know, and uh, such that you can leverage the power of real estate, leverage things like the cash flow, the tax benefits, the equity buildup, the appreciation, the ability to leverage. How do you do all that? And, uh, and that's essentially what I try to do is to show people how it's done and such that you know real estate can work for them so rather than selling other people's houses you can also leverage the power of real estate for yourself and build a business for yourself that you know you can pass on as a legacy to your family to your children and, and also you can do good as well i mean that's what it's all about that's what i do i love what you do so you have a, a live stream podcast i want people to hear about you also i mean I love talking about books and your favorite quotes and things with you. So I'd love for you to share um, your podcast that you have um, and also, uh, you know, a couple books, maybe some quotes, um, you know, from you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have, um, uh, I have a, a, a weekly live stream on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Uh, it's called Wealth Wednesdays, Wealth Wednesdays. Uh, you go to my, uh, you know, Instagram, it's live. And uh, so it's Joe Asamoah. Uh, the handle is, uh, you know, Joe Asamoah on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Um, Eastern time is when I, I do that. It's very informative. I, I pick on, you know, I talk about uh, subjects pertaining to real estate investing. And uh, it's, I think it's pretty good. It's very informative. It's mm -hmm. educational. There's no fluff. Uh, it's about actionable, uh, you know, subjects which you can uh, take and, uh, and and use. So that's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then uh, every other Friday, in fact, I'm doing one uh, this today at 3 p.m. on the Bigger Pocket. I know there's a, there's a platform called Bigger Pockets. Yeah, Bigger Pockets I like is, Bigger Pockets. Yeah, yeah that, they're the largest um, uh, social media platform for real estate investors in the world. Uh, I was interviewed on them uh, about a year ago uh, on their podcast, <clears throat> and uh, it went very well, in fact. Uh, according to Brandon Turner, it's one of the best ones he's ever done, according to him. Uh, <laughs> but it really bloomed, and through that, um, you know, that opportunity, um, uh, what's it called? They invited me to, to, to host a live stream. Uh, so I host a live stream every other Friday. Uh, on bigger pockets and um so i'm gonna you know so again we talk about uh, different subjects i have guests uh, i've interviewed i've interviewed uh, barbara corcoran on the shark tank uh mike holmes uh who's on hgtv uh various other personalities and things like that so and i also talk about different subjects i love it so and you're an avid reader. Um, what what's a favorite quote of yours? And um, what about you know a couple of favorite books, um, either with with real estate or or outside of you know? Yeah. I enjoy conversation with you. So what what uh, knowledge you want to drop for people? <laughs> I, I told you about the wise man learns from his mistakes. A genius learns from other people's mistakes. That's something that always uh, you know um, you know resonates with me because it makes a lot of sense. You know why learn from your mistakes if you don't have to? <laughs> it's painful, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, it's a school of hard knocks. You know, it's, it's expensive, it's painful, it's frustrating. And many times, it's almost like, you know, you got, I mean, I got, we got teenagers. 
So, you know, you, 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 you try to give advice to these teenagers, but they know it all. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I mean, they don't want to listen. They, they know everything. So, you know, unfortunately, they have to learn the hard way. <laughs> and, uh, and then eventually they'll learn that maybe the advice that we we're giving them was, was sound uh, advice. But, you know, yeah. but they have to go through that process. But I'm just saying it's not necessary. If, if they were smart. <laughs> They yeah, don't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they do this, but they don't want to hear it, so they just do it anyway. <laughs> and uh, and so on. So yeah, so that's that's that that's one. Um in terms of books, um, uh, one of the I mean, um a real good book, in fact, was the real estate uh, the millionaire real estate investor by uh, Gary Keller. Uh he's the owner of Keller Williams. And uh, that's a really, really good book. Uh, the Millionaire Real Estate Investor. It taught me a lot. It, it breaks it down, uh, the systems, the processes, the procedures, uh, the team, you know, all those different things. Um, it's heavy reading, but it's good reading. And, I have uh, it over there. I, I would agree with you. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's heavy, a good right? one. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a heavy reading one. Uh, the, uh, you know, I'm also uh, an avid listener of... Uh, uh, audio uh, audio books. So uh, I listen to I got a boatload of audio books. Uh, and uh, so uh, oh my, there's one called uh, the productivity project. That's a good one. And uh, I forgot the name of the author. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just there's just a lot of good stuff out there. Pro yeah, productivity. That's that's one that comes to mind. Uh, essentially, what he's saying there, the author, was that you know, in the olden days. Uh, you know, when people worked in the agricultural fields, your productivity was based on the time. So you work five hours, 10 hours, you get paid five hours, 10 hours. But in this sort of knowledge age, uh, just because you work five hours doesn't necessarily mean you're productive, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. You can work five hours and get nothing done. And, uh, and so essentially he's saying that, uh, how, do you, how do people, what's the best way to be productive in this kind of uh, environment? And he essentially breaks it down to three things. One is uh, your productivity is based on the time that you have available, okay, to do the task at hand, obviously. So if you've got a major, like, if we, we're doing this podcast or interview, um, it's maybe an hour long. Now, if, you, if, you, if you've only got 15 minutes available, it doesn't make sense for us to do the podcast. <laughs> okay? Right? Yeah, we, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because we need it out. Okay, so it, it depends on how much time you have available. That's the first one. Uh, the second thing, uh, it's your, um, you know, your attention. How much time do you have to focus? Okay, uh, because if you're able to focus, you can get more done. You know, we're, we're kind of in the social media environment, uh, email environment, you know, text messaging environment, whereby you're constantly being distracted. And so it's difficult to, 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 to have that attention span. So what he's saying is that you time block your day, uh, whereby essentially, you know, you allocate 15, 20, 30 minutes, an hour, uh, or you block everything out, block everything out, and, uh, and then you focus on that task at hand, whatever that task is, probably the most important task for the day. Focus on that, and you'll, you're more likely to get more done during that time block time rather than scattering uh, over, uh, over, over the, the, the day. And then the third part is the energy. You know, how much energy do you have, you know? Um, so, I mean, I'm a morning person, so I can wake up at four o'clock <laughs> and uh, I'm rolling, you know, I have a workout and I'm just rolling. So by nine o'clock, I've got a whole bunch of, bunch of stuff done. And so I have the most energy uh, during the morning times. So if I want to get a lot of stuff done, I, I, you do it when you have the most energy, uh, which for me would be in the morning, where you can time block, uh, focus on certain things, and you can allocate the time for that. And therefore, you can become more productive. Uh, that's essentially the gist of what he was saying. And, uh, you know, and there are times like in the evenings, um, I mean, I, my, you know, my energy level <laughs> after eight o'clock, it's just like goes to zero. You know? <laughs> So, you know, so there are times in the day where you have less energy and therefore you can still get stuff done, but you don't, you don't want to do stuff that requires a lot of, uh, you know, effort and attention. You can start doing other things, which, you know, you, 
you clean the house, you know, you put the headphones on, still cleaning. I mean, it, you know, um, you don't need a lot of attention for that. You can do that in the background kind of thing where you got low levels of energy. So he was saying that the, the, the activity requires a lot of thought, attention, energy, and so on. It's best to do it uh, during those blocks of time. I mean, that's, a, that's a, I mean, it's just a whole bunch. I mean, I'm into audio, uh, audio books. So I listen to that kind of stuff. And it's just fascinating, uh, you know, so I, I do that while I'm working out and, uh, and so on. Yeah. <laughs> I love, thank you. No, I, I wrote down notes actually. And um, I appreciate you sharing with everybody. And, you know, Joe, uh, it's an honor to have you as a partner and I love what you do. And uh, check out Joe and his live stream on Instagram. And also the, uh, this YouTube, make sure you, you check out um, anything else with bigger pockets or anything else he's got out there because it's, it's gem. So uh, pleasure to have you on, Joe. No, it's been an honor, Kristen, and uh, hopefully this is helpful for the audience. And again, you know, uh, my goal, I, as far as I'm concerned, the pie is big enough for everybody. Uh, it doesn't matter if everyone does what I do. It's not like they're going to buy the whole of DC, they're going to buy the whole of Maryland. The whole <laughs> it's not going to happen, you know. Uh, but if you do good, uh, you develop relationships and uh, you develop, you know, and uh, people will bring me opportunities. I meet new people and hopefully we can expand the circle and uh and so on so that's what it's all about it's uh you know make money but also do good and hopefully uh you know you'll get your blessings as well thank you so much joe you heard it here at dc metro real producers have a great day everybody thank you thanks Kristen. <laughs>